welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already watched it, I suggest checking out my August TBR, so the books that I plan to read this month, even though we're already in, not necessarily the middle of the month, but a good chunk into the month of August. So I've read a couple of those that I had listed, but if you wanna see what else I'm gonna be reading, there's that video. Also, check me out on my social media channels. I just recently added TikTok, but I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and I think Storygraph is on there too. All of those are listed below in the description. All right, so we are going to be doing a July wrap up for today. So again, apologies for the late upload, publishing, whatever, but I was in Florida last week. I will have that video up probably in the next week or so of my time there, but that was in the end of July, beginning of August, so I wasn't able to film down there the books that I had read because I left some of them here and I like to show them to you all. Plus it's already hard enough to pack a lot of books into my suitcase and yeah that it was very hard to get back <laughs> with the, the books that I had bought so there's that but before I go into those books and like what I thought of them and everything I wanted to give you an update as it pertains to my always fully book planner so Little Inklings Design is a Canada based like small business and uh, independent store and they will probably be releasing their 2022 planners or at least i saw a post that they were planning their cover design for it so that i think i bought it in october or november for the following year if i remember correctly i'm still on the fence on whether i want to continue to do it for next year or get the condensed version because this is a lot of pages that i haven't even filled up all the way and i'm, I'm struggling to find the time to write in every single month or like be very detailed with my designs and everything. I have very terrible handwriting. If I go slow enough, it might look okay, but I just personally, I just don't have the patience for it. So I'm deciding whether I want to continue with it or not. But anyway, I filled out the reading wrap up spread and here are a few stats. So I read eight books for the month of July. The number of pages read was 3,768. They were five print books, zero ebooks, three audiobooks, and then the genres that were read include sci fi, contemporary, historical fiction, and young adult. So, pretty exciting. I love, if you've followed me before or know a lot about me as a reader, you know I love to explore different genres and change it up. I don't really have a favorite at the moment. My August TBR has a mix of books in there, including graphic novels, short stories, and poems. So I'm excited to, I'm already talking about August. Oh, let me recap July. But anyway, lesson is I'm all over the place when it comes to genre and I like it. I also mentioned what the best book I read was and yeah I think that's pretty much it for my stats. I will do we I will be doing a quarterly update at the end of no September? October, November, December. Yeah quarterly. Three months. Okay so not the end of this month then the next month I will do a quarterly wrap up to show where I'm at as I head into the final stretch of 2021 which is so weird to think about. We're already getting close to fall. One of my friends texted me saying that the pumpkin spice latte <laughs> is coming in the middle of August, August 18th, I think she said, which some may think that's ridiculous. Some may think great start of a school, new school year, fall. We want all the fall things, some over summer and the heat. I don't know, I'm indifferent right now. I guess it'll depend when we get there. I, I don't want a hot drink. Like when I've been going to get coffees, whether at Starbucks or somewhere else, they've been iced. So I'm not really looking to do a hot PSL right now. So maybe that'll change. All right, so for the books for this month. First book I read was Anna Kay by Jenny Lee. And this is the first in at least a duology if, from what I've seen, there might be more, I'm not sure. But this is a contemporary retelling of Anna Karenina and I'm all about it. It was super interesting. I know the basic story of Anna Karenina and I know what happens at the end, which is why I was intrigued of like, how is there a sequel? And now I'm like, okay, now I get why there's a sequel. But I think they took the elements of Anna Karenina and like, of course, like modernized them, added a like rich school in like New York, New York City, and a lot of of the characters there are like very privileged and some aren't, but are like trying to make their way in that world as if not necessarily they are, but like 
want to be a part of it or be friends with those folks and um, like work with them for a better future. So that I like. I have a whole review of this up on my blog. I believe I gave it a four or four and a half out of five stars because I just liked how, I don't know, it was, it was dramatic and like kept me guessing because I knew, like I said, I knew what Anna Karenina was about, but this follows some parts of it, but then it doesn't in other ways, which I loved. And I love those kind of retellings where it's not like a, a complete, it's not completely loyal to it. Like, I think that's okay. Like, that's awesome that you're taking that as a creative piece and like going your own direction with it. So that's what I appreciated about this one. The second one I'm waiting for on audiobook, it's Anna K. Away. So we'll have to see about that. Next, I read The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, and this was my first completed print version or written <laughs> book as it comes to The Lord of the Rings. So I should also mention I participated in the Path or Pantheon reading challenge this month as well. So Anna Kay was for a book about love or has a love story, and this was a first in a series. So I know this may go either way of whether you think it's the beginning of a series or not, since The Lord of the Rings is its own trilogy, but this technically is a prequel because there's a lot of talk and like symbolism and everything leading into the the trilogy so I counted it as the first in the series so yeah I did a whole reading vlog on this and I enjoyed it I think this it took me a bit to get into the world building and like the names of the characters and everything so I, I have a hard time like memorizing those like not necessarily make-believe but things you don't hear every day like Gollum or, or smog or you know different things like that so it took me a bit but I, I feel as I was reading through the story it came every event that happened was kind of cyclical or like the same kind of story or like plot over and over again which was kind of frustrating because I, I, I feel like yeah like you need to move the story along there needs to be rising action there needs to be things that are happening but I feel like it just kept happening where they were running into an issue it solved move on to the next thing run into an issue, it's solved, and then it's just over and over and over again. But I think like two or three times that's fine, but then it just kept going and I'm like, okay, can we get to a point where they're still in peril or like something else has to happen? So that was probably my biggest critique of this. I ended up finding the trilogy when I was down in Florida in a little free library, like super old, like 1970, maybe older copies like vintage paperback copies in the little free library that I ended up grabbing because I thought it was a sign <laughs> that I should get them. So we'll see when I get to the rest of the story. Then we have Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney and this was my book set in a city. So this I ranked a little bit lower because I was excited at first that it was going to be like a love letter to the the city of New York City and it was in a way. I just felt that as Lillian Boxfish, so she's like, it's New Year's Eve and she's walking to like all these different destinations in New York City, uh, meeting up with different people that she's met throughout her entire life. And we're rehashing a lot of stories from her past in the city as she came to be like a very famous like advertisement um, person and then a writer as well. So that was pretty cool to get her backstory of like how like she was like a leader in like women's independence or or like working and everything during that time of I think it was like right after like depression time on yeah I liked that I just felt like it wasn't leading up to anything I think the whole point of the story which I was talking to somebody about this on Instagram before like the point of the story is a reflection and like that's fine I guess I was just looking for something to happen like in the present or like future and I at one point I'm like oh my gosh like is she going to die like is this is her is this love letter like the last thing she'll remember or she's going to her death or she's going to pass away on New Year's or something so that was a lot of my thought as I was reading this which is kind of depressing so which I know if I I had to think the other way like my friend did where it's like no like it's a it's a beautiful story it's about reflecting on one's life and the tr challenges they've gone through and the accomplishments they've had and she hasn't had it easy in her life which i think is, is good to share or to to talk about that it wasn't like rainbows and butterflies uh all over the city when she was working 
So, yeah. I don't know. I just, I guess I expected more in terms of, like, leading up to something. So, there you go. And then, woo, woo, oh my god, I did it! I finally, finally finished Written in My Own Heart's Blood by Diana Gableden. And this is, I can't remember now, seventh or eighth book in the Outlander series. This I've been reading since, I think, November of last year. At least last year. I know that for sure. So over six, eight, what month are we in? Oh, over eight months I've been reading this. Oh my gosh, this is a beast. A beast. I can't, I think it was like 800 pages. Oh my Atlanta. 814 pages. Holy cow. And I, so... I reached this point, let's see, I think I reached over, like just before the halfway point in November or December and then like slowly picked it up in the last few months or so, but this month I alternated it with audiobook, which was a lifesaver. Not that I like didn't believe I could finish it by just reading it through print book, but I am a strong believer that audiobooks are still reading, so I was going to compliment it, so I alternated back and forth. But yes, finally finished it loved it i am ready for the next one there are still like a few question marks of what has been happening i don't want to give too much away because well the i know there is a tv series out on stars which i watch all the time and it's up on netflix as well where i, I rewatch episodes just for the heck of it because i love the score i love the acting i love the the costumes and the story of course but yeah there's so much in this book that if i said something and you haven't read them or aren't caught up then yeah that would be problematic so i don't want to be that person however i am so excited because now i can finally engage in like the facebook groups i can listen to the podcast like outlander pod was one of my favorite podcasts i had to stop it because they started diving deep into this book and like saying like oh yeah this won't be spoiler free so i like took it upon myself to not listen anymore because i wanted to get the experience myself so now i'm going to go back into older episodes and read this so my friend and i were talking that this book let's see this came out in 2014 so i've had what you're in seven years to to catch up on it and now the next one's coming out in this november which i'm super excited about not sure i feel like i say this every time i'm not sure what the goal is after that one if there's more i know there's companion novels with one of the characters or one of the secondary characters john gray so yeah i don't know what the plan is but from how long each of these books have taken I feel like I have a buffer for when that comes out, but I know I already pre-ordered it. It's going to be signed, which I'm really excited about, and it'll be coming here in November. Perfect for Thanksgiving break. Woo -woo. We'll see if I actually finish that over that break. It probably won't happen, but fingers crossed. The last print book I read was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So I've only read one other book by her, and that is Shadow and Bone as part of the Grishaverse, which I am like meh about. I, I guess I wasn't really jazzed with those characters in the Grishaverse. I'm more interested in Six of Crows from when I saw the Netflix adaptation. So I bought the duology of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. And then I'll see if I go back to Shadow and Bone. I probably won't. I guess it just depends on what I think of with the, the series as it continues with however they want to go with it. But this is completely new direction. This is an adult book. It's very dark academia and also like magic and fantasy thrown in there. So this I thought was super interesting. This is, I think at least one, I think it's book one of maybe two. I mean, like there, ha there has to be more based off how it ended because it did end on a cliffhanger, but I loved how it was infusing like secret societies that have like magical powers or like can cultivate supernatural kind of things and each secret society had its own uh i guess its own style of supernatural or like what they were known for which i thought was super cool so this is set at yale so i haven't been up to yale i've been to princeton and harvard i think that's it oh and cornell duh i used to work there so it's pretty cool to get that vibe of like an ivy league and like people like studying and being on a college campus so i was getting like fall and like back to school kind of vibes which i was really appreciative of but one thing i i did want more of is the actual collegiate experience like they're on a college campus but i felt like a lot of it was this mystery which is good like that's the point of it but i think there was a missed opportunity for more like 
things as you think about college like there's a couple parties and um like some like going to class and everything but i don't know i guess i was just looking for more like it's been a while since i've been in school so maybe that's what i was looking for some nostalgia of being in a, a residence hall or like going to the the dining hall or whatever meeting up with friends so yeah the main character alex she did have like a few roommates but she, they were barely in it like they had parts of the plot that were important but they were small like in terms of like the quantity in this book was a small amount of pages written about them even though that plot was part of a big deal so yeah i just wish there was more of that uh yeah i think that's pretty much it i also i bought this mainly because of the cover i bought this down in sundog books in florida so i yeah and i'd seen this around a bunch as well then I read three audiobooks. One was A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey, and this one was super cute. I gave this four and a half out of five stars. I also wrote a review for this one. And this one, I just love the cultural vibe. Like, this is a Cuban American young woman that lives in Miami and was sent off to England for, I think it was either a semester or a summer, I can't remember, but she, it was pretty much like a mental health move that her family decided was best for her because of a few things that had happened while she was in Miami with her best friend and her boyfriend. And she, of course, is not excited about it, but I loved how she like made the most of it in a way and was like using her gifts of like baking which was her abuela's thing with her and she wants to like own a store or, like take over her abuela's um bakery when she goes back home or when she graduates and everything so yeah i just love the the infusion of like the cuban culture with english so it's i know there's some of it set in london but it's pretty much set outside in a smaller town outside of london which i am always obsessed with and I thought it was cute. It wasn't like, a, like yes, there's like some love in there, but I, I don't think it was the main driver of the story. I think it was independence, believing in yourself, finding a new dream, and community and what that looks like, as well as family. So I just, it was just a feel good read. Then I read Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfler. So this was a super super hot and uh steamy <laughs> lgbtq romance and yeah like i was like whoa blushing big time <laughs> with some of the scenes so fair work i didn't know if it was young adult when i had p picked it up or picked it out from my libby app because the cover kind of threw me off because it's kind of like an animated cartoony looking cover but i like it could be young adult but that's awesome that they're like they're exploring what that relationship looks like and all that but i'm like holy i guess i'm comparing it to boyfriend material which there wasn't as much steam and i would consider that more young adult than this one but i guess there's there's that for you if you care so this follows two women who go on a blind date together they couldn't be more opposite if you had tried one of them i thought she was really cute she is a astrologer and she uses um like astrology to to pick out like different relate or like set people up on different relationships based off their astrological signs they have a podcast and like an app and everything so it's super cool and then the other woman i believe she's an accountant or or some kind of office or business job so you can already tell right there like they're different personalities based off kind of i, I hate to put people in like buckets like that but you can just based off that and like reading through the book, you can tell the one who's more of astrology is more like loose and free and like not, and doesn't really care what people think about her in a way, like has her own style. And then the other woman, she's like more reserved, like has things in a certain way, like very organized, all that. So they, another incident of fake dating. We all know how that's going to go. So they start fake dating to appease their family members. And then it goes from there. But I love, it, it's called Written in the Stars, but I just love the, the astrological moments that are in there. Like it's, I mean, it's kind of a little cheesy, but it's, it's cute in a way too, how they, a lot of the language and like the, the writing it surrounds itself around like astrology and like stars and, and signs and things like that. So I thought that was really cute. The last book I read was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And this was another like feel good independent book for like a young adult and this follows Imani as she is a young mother in high school who has big dreams of becoming a chef and 
is also wanting to provide a good future for her child or for her daughter so that I just loved because like there was no doubt that she was doing everything for her like for her daughter I mean like everything she did was to show that you can reach your goals you can you can work really hard like she was doing well in school yeah it was, I just thought that was amazing like if that is the situation that people find themselves in not necessarily like make the best of it but like she worked so hard and it like it paid off for the opportunities that she was given and like how she was able to make things work with supporting her daughter and achieving her dreams to be a good role model so that I like applaud like so much and uh this is my first Elizabeth Acevedo book so yeah I'm looking forward to reading more by her in the future so the last two or last two prompts I guess in Path or Pantheon reading challenge so with Fire on High was a prompt with the fire on the cover and I had to switch that one out from The City of Brass because that was a freaking chunky book and I like couldn't get to it so I just listened to the audiobook of With the Fire on High instead and that was uh, acceptable as part of the challenge that I could swap one book out so that's what I did and then what was the other one? Oh, and Ninth House was a, a dark book. So there you go. All right. And that pretty much wraps up July. <laughs> that wasn't that fast. I feel like I, I keep getting these longer and longer, especially as I think about more things as they connect to other stories or like where I got them from. And I don't know. I just keep talking. So apologies there. My favorite out of these was probably A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. Because I, like I said, it was just a good feel good novel. And I was having a rough couple of weeks in the month of July with some stuff happening. Not, not with you all or anything like that. But yeah, it was a, a good relaxing read but also like had some meat to it which I thought was important. Anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video please let me know in the comments below what you read for the month of July or what you've been reading lately I'd love to hear from you there feel free to give it a thumbs up or hit subscribe I usually post videos on Mondays or at least once a week sometimes twice a week I'll have knock on wood a bunch coming up because of my my Tampa trip my what else my reading retreat coming up uh, I have a Dewey's readathon coming up this weekend that is a 24-hour read reverse readathon so starting at 8 p.m. and going to 8 p.m. the next day and yeah there's a couple other things in there as well so yeah feel free to hit the notification bell to know when I post next and feel free to follow me on the channels that I mentioned earlier and I have them listed below in the description so have a great day and happy reading